Welcome to interview. I'm Earl Buske and our guest today is Mr. Bruce Paddington, producer and director of a film entitled Forward Ever, The Killing of a Revolution. And that is perhaps one of the most telling um, films to date, trying to explain to the world what went down in Grenada. And Mr. Paddington is here. Uh, along with his movie, which is making the rounds uh, around the world, around the Caribbean, Europe, and uh, it's St. Lucia's turn um, this time around. Um, welcome to St. Lucia, Bruce. Thank you. And um, you've done this film, and the name, the name says all. It says a lot. It, well, it, it, it says the two aspects of, of the revolution, that for whatever, it was a very powerful revolution. You were there. Um, it was an exciting time. Um, so many things were happening, uh, unique things, things that really should still be happening today. People were growing more food. There was a major literacy campaign. Um, there was low-cost housing. Um, the, uh, the role of women was enhanced and, uh, and all kind of programs for, for women and youth. For, um, there were cultural activities, there, were, there was so much going on. And for whatever, it was not just for um, Grenada, but in many ways for the whole Caribbean, was forwarding ever with a very charismatic leader, Maurice Bishop. However, the second part of the title of the film is The Killing of a Revolution, because it was not just the killing of a revolutionary, Maurice Bishop, Jackie Crefter, and, and, and Maurice Bishop's um, kind of senior colleagues, but a whole revolution was killed by what happened on October the 19th, 1983. And as you correctly pointed out, I was there, I was at an interesting time. I went uh, after it started and before it imploded. And um, in watching the name of the film, I've often wondered, why did you start at the end when there was, uh, at, why did you choose the bitter end when there was so much of the sweet beginning that you described? No, the, um, when you see the film, um, we did start at the beginning. We started in the, 19, the 1980s, no, 1960s, 19, uh, up to 1974, we, we covered the Gary period. Eric Gary, uh, uh, as you know, was the, the prime minister. I think the English made him Sir Eric Gary. Um, he believed in flying saucers and unidentified flying objects. He was a dictator. He was a... Uh, um, he had his henchmen called the, the Mongoose Gang. And it, people like Morris Bishop um, were, 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 were trying to, to, well, to were protesting against the oppression that was going on there. And so we deal with this in the film. So the film really starts off with the, the Gary period, with the formation of the new dual movement by um, people like Unison Whiteman, um, Selwyn Strawn, Maurice Bishop, uh, and, and others. And we, we looked at the, the coup of, uh, of March the 13th, 1979, um, when um, Maurice Bishop, and, and when they took over power, um, Gary was uh, away in, um, in, in America at the time, and it was all basically a bloodless coup. I think maybe three persons died, which is, uh, but, it, 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 but within an hour or two, the whole country fell to the New Jew movement, Maurice Bishop, became prime minister, and from 1979 to 1983, it was for whatever, with all kind of um, exciting programs. Um, and that is covered in the film. At least a good third of the, of, of the film looks at those early periods. But in many ways, the most um, heart-wrenching um, part of the film is what happened on October the 19th, and the film goes into some detail about that. What do you expect people to get most out of the film? As you pointed out, um, there was a lot of good happening there, which meant a lot for the Caribbean. Um, I can tell you that other Caribbean governments, OECS governments, um, had closer relationships with the revolutionary government of Grenada because it was indeed, it remained a member of, of the OECS and it remained a member of CARICOM. And um, 
the, this was something that attracted you know, regional participation. Unfortunately, however, we're talking about 31 years ago, um, since the death of Maurice Bishop and the, of the revolution. We're talking about 35 years ago, um, the revolution having taken place. So the average person between 35 and 40 would have been, um, would, would not know much about what they would have, except what they would have read. Um, would the film help people who really would like to better understand what happened in Grenada? Well, well that, is that is the reason for making the film. I, I think it was such an important period in, in, in not just Grenada's history, but in the history of the Caribbean. It, in many ways, it was a turning point. Um, it was a t because in 1979, the Caribbean was quite left-wing, quite socialist, with people like uh, Michael Manley in power in, in Jamaica. Jamaica, but in 1983, it was, there were different politicians in charge. Edward Siaga, Eugenia Charles, Tom Adams, and, and they were far, uh, far more um, conservative. And so the film deals with the good, the bad, and the ugly. It deals with all the pro progressive things that happened um, it, it deals with, 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 with the horrors of the implosion. And it, it, it's something that every Caribbean person should, should know about because, uh, you know, uh, the, as the cliche goes, if we don't know our history, you know, we're doomed to, you know, to just continue things we're due for and, a and break repeat when, it, you know. We're due for a break. When we come back, I'd like us to go to the meat of the matter. October 19th, the day the revolution imploded. Interview with Mr. Bruce Paddington, director, producer of the film For Whatever, The Killing of a Revolution. We'll be right back. St. Lucia, our home. St. Lucia represents different things to each of us. What do you like about St. Lucia? Strong communities. Natural resources. Thriving industries. Democracy. National pride. Our unique culture. Creativity. While we may all have different views, we can work together to build a stronger nation. Let us each play our part. Welcome back to our interview with Bruce Paddington, producer, director of Power Whatever, The Killing of a Revolution. Um, Bruce, the actual the revolution died on the day that Maurice Bishop and others were killed. Um, there were efforts to save the day, um, whatever that could have meant in the face of, 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 of the subsequent invasion. Um, what do you think the Caribbean really lost? I think it lost hope in indigenous methods of solving one's own problems. Um, there, was, there was so much excitement um, for the revolution and people from throughout the region and even some from the states and from England came to work often for very little money or as volunteers in support of the revolution. Some, um, many for a dollar a day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is that how much you got? <laughs> and uh, um, as you know, Dr. Didicus Jules um, was the permanent secretary um, in the People's Revolutionary Government. Ministry of Education. Uh, Ministry of Education. Responsible for the National Literacy and Program. And Merle Hodge. Hundreds of Grenadians. Hundreds of Grenadians. Merle Hodge mm -hmm. um, from Trinidad. She worked there um, in the literacy campaign. There was um, an, an English woman called Lisbeth de Brock, a, a white mm -hmm. woman who worked, who worked there as well. Mm -hmm. There was um, people from St. Vincent, um, Suriname. People from Suriname, all over the region. All over the it, Guyana. It, it, it inspired so many people. And, and so many of the things that this, the slogans, grow your own food, um, you have local um, TV shows and have local books. And, and there, there's just so much that should still be in place. But it all went haywire in, in the period before October the 19th. Um, and even though it's, it, 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 maybe it's wrong to, to, to put it, make it seem as though it's one person against another person, that, how, that is often how it is portrayed because 
the in internal, the end it was a power it was an the internal, internal division the internal division mm -hmm. and and there was a, a, a very strong very intelligent very bright deputy prime minister in Bernard Cord mm -hmm. um, and he had a, he had a lot of supporters in the party in the end his supporters controlled the party and they it, it voted that they, there should be joint leadership of the party. That Maurice Bishop, instead of being leader of the party, prime minister, he could remain as prime minister, but he had to be a joint leader. And he, he, this was voted at, 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 at all kind of meetings that lasted sometimes two days <laughs> to have a meeting to discuss this. And at the beginning he said yes, but then he went on a tour of Eastern Europe and he reflected on it. He went back via Cuba, although Cuba says they didn't interfere with his thinking. But then he decided maybe the people want me as the leader of both of the party and, and, of, uh, and, of, the, um, and of the government as prime minister. And, and this led to him being, this and some other th issues, led to him being put under house arrest. So you're putting the most charismatic, most popular leader under house arrest. And the masses of the people couldn't take it. 20,000 of them on October the 19th came out into the streets. Freedom. But the army responded by sending up armored carriers. And that same day, October the 19th, he, Jackie Kreft, and supporters, and a number of his colleagues were machine gunned to death. And what is so sad is, is 31 years later, the bodies have never been found. And that's, that's, that's another uh, sorry issue that 31 years after, uh, Maurice Bishop's body has not been returned to mm. Grenada for a decent Christian burial. Um, the most that has been said in terms of acknowledging where the body is um, was the, the current U.S. ambassador to Barbados indicating last October in response to questions around the 30th anniversary of Bishop's death. Um, when the claim was made that the United States was not returning Bishop's body because it had been taken into US custody before the trial, <coughs> excuse me, his response was in effect, well, no government, neither Grenada nor any in CARICOM have spoken to us or asked us, but we are prepared to go into a discussion about it. Um, but, but, but that being said, um, Bruce, the, in your research, we don't have much time, but in your research, did you find um, that ideology played any role in bringing about that well, it's, divide? It's, or um, was the main cause of that divide? It seems that <coughs> there was a split between left and ultra-left. It seems there was a split between the more moderate, mm -hmm. uh, Maurice Bishop, and the more, who radical, and the more radical Bernard Cord Cord faction. Cord faction. Mm -hmm. Um, some other um, others have said it there wasn't this they, they actually had similar views but most well, people feel that there, it was a, a more a, a moderate versus a, an extreme. extreme and and Maurice Bishop was beginning to get people in, in when the American government on his side mm -hmm. he actually visited Hunter College and gave a major speech mm -hmm. and you'll see that in the film okay um, we don't have much time um, let's do some 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 who brought okay. you here? Who brought you here? Okay. And, and, and what are you going to do with the film here? Okay. So very quickly, um, the film um, started through a research grant from the UWI, where I teach at University of West Indies in St. Augustine. Um, and then I received some, a grant from a, a foundation in Curacao called Fundacion Bon Intention. Mm -hmm. Then I received a um, money from Flow, Columbus mm -hmm. Communications. I think they're actually um, doing some work or, or yeah. entering into the uh, um, St. Lucia market. They, are they, they were really very, very helpful and they put money into the, into the production and post-production of the film. Mm -hmm. And then the, then, you, then the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company put money into the marketing and the open campus uh, um, throughout the region sp and specifically here at the open campus St. Lucia, um, UE St. Lucia, they brought me here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and hopefully we're going to have a great screening. Well, let's look forward to that. Bruce Paddington, welcome. And Thank you. Um, looking forward to 
uh, the premiere screening of your film in you, St. Lucia. You may see yourself in it. Okay. <laughs> that was Bruce Paddington, director, producer of the uh, film entitled Forever, The Killing of a Revolution. I'm Earl Buske for Interview. <laughs>